Hey everyone, it's time for another live look at the astrology. My name is Katie Sweetman and this is Empowering Astrology for the week of September 6th through 12th, 2021. Sorry for the little bit of a late start uh, today. Um, it's a holiday weekend or at least a long weekend here in the United States. Uh, that said, I hope you all are enjoying the day if you are here with me in the U.S., but if you are elsewhere, I hope also hope that you're enjoying uh, your day or your week as well. So if you're watching live, of course, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, for those who do not know me, uh, my name is Katie Sweetman. Um, I'm an astrologer here in the New York City area. I'm actually now in New Jersey. Uh, never thought that would happen, but here we are. New. That's the thing about 2021. There's just so many things that are changing. It's as if we got to 2020. And I say this from an astrological perspective, but we sort of hit a hard stop. And then going forward, all the things that we thought would never change, maybe, maybe they're changing. So a lot of uh, the tectonic plates of our lives are changing this year. And I know my fellow fixed signs, my Tauruses, my Leos, my Scorpios, and my Aquariuses, you're really feeling this right now. And my so the, the joke I've been saying throughout the year is like, the fixed signs aren't so fixed at the moment. And even if you aren't one of those four signs, um, you're feeling this in some part of your life. This is something that we've been talking about throughout our, our time together every week when we come together live to talk about the astrology. But here we are, we're in Virgo season. Uh, we're sort of stepping out of the energies of Leo season. We had that Leo new moon on August 8th that kind of had a lot going on with it. But with the new moon today, uh, September 6th, uh, we are bringing things to a close, but also opening up a new chapter. And as we leave behind these Leo energies. We're also reconnecting with the eclipse energy because this week we're sort of at that midpoint between the eclipses that we had back at the end of May, May 26th to be precise of 2021 and also June 10th of 2021. Yeah, we are three months into uh, the eclipses. Um, we're going to have three months from now uh, another round of eclipses. It just this is what happens every six months, like clockwork. Um, here come the eclipses, but you know we're in the midpoint right now, and the midpoint actually has some some energy to it. So I think that this uh, this new moon, which we'll go uh, into a little bit more in a moment, it does talk. It does bring a lot of stability. Uh, I think the stability that we just did not have with the last uh, new moon. But this new moon also does pick up on the lunar nodes and the eclipses. So for some of you, especially my mutable signs, my Geminis, my Virgos, my Sages, and my Pisces, maybe you're feeling this week or you're feeling this lunar month as a time of shift, going in a new direction. Eclipses can sometimes, or eclipse energy, can sometimes mark our, the milestones of our life. But... That said, again, my name is Katie Sweetman. Um, we, we gather every week to talk about the astrology and something that I say, perhaps a little annoyingly so, is that the astrology is 50%. You are the other 50%. You know, how do we work with this energy? You know, the, the astrology is just energy. It's archetypical energy. It's not these space beams that hit you, but it interfaces with you. It interfaces with your consciousness, your subconscious, and your unconscious energies. And this is why everybody feels it differently in their own way. But of course, there is a common experience. So again, we're looking at the astrology of September 6th through 12th, 2021. And as I alluded to earlier, we are starting the week with a Virgo new moon. So this Virgo new moon on September 6th, um, it'll be at gosh, 8.52 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time here. I'm here in the New York City area, but this will be, of course, other times for those further afar. But this uh, new moon, it's at 14 degrees of, of Virgo. And this new moon, it like all new moons, it opens up a new chapter, a new lunar month. Every lunar month, uh, every we have four weeks in each of the lunar months, we see life through a different lens. 
last lunar months we we were seeing it through the lens of leo uh that energy has its own uh archetype creation uh passion joy fun leisure but for each and every one of you that energy is focused someplace differently in your chart so here we are four weeks later virgo new moon now you know here at least in the us and i think this is probably the case for a lot of people is back to school season. Um, Virgo is the teacher. It's one of the teaching and education signs of the Zodiac. And it's probably no coincidence that we go back to school at this time of year, whether or not you are uh, of school age or, or older and thinking about educating yourself in other ways. But this new moon, it says that over the next four weeks, we are seeing life through the prism of Virgo. What is Virgo? Virgo, it is the sixth sign of the zodiac. You know, previously we were in Leo season. Leo was about the eye, it's about the self-expression, creativity, but Leo is a fire sign. And then we go from fire to earth. Virgo is an earth sign. And earth signs all about taking that spark of life and putting it into something, making it real. In Virgo season, we look at work and craft and practice and diligence and sort of the rhythms and the things that we all need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, there's a, uh, you know, Virgo is sometimes come across as a little unsexy, but I actually really like Virgo energy because it gets things done. Without that Virgo energy, we wouldn't, our lives wouldn't run. We wouldn't brush our teeth. We wouldn't show up to our jobs. Uh, we wouldn't, you know, take care of all the details because Virgo helps us to implement plans and to put systems into place. Virgo actually has this connection to Aquarius. A lot of people don't know this. Um, Aquarius is Virgo's sixth sign and Virgo is the sixth sign. So this is a season for us to look at the many systems of our lives, both on a larger level, but also on a personal level, because Virgo is a very personal sign. Yes, it's a sign of service and helping our communities, but it's on a very different level than Aquarius. Aquarius is very macro and Virgo is very, you know, you know, tangible, touchable, make it real, uh, get things done. Virgo is also the sign of health and wellness. It teaches us to take care of ourselves, take care of our bodies, to eat the foods that our bodies need in order to uh, not have vitamin deficiencies and to run properly. But it also is a sign that takes great care takes great care in helping others and again wants to be of service to other people. So these are all themes that we're going to experience in our own way over the next four weeks. Uh, you know, how do we become more of service? How do we get more organized? How do we create a plan, a new plan perhaps, that's going to allow our life to head towards the course that we would like? It's, you know, Virgo as an earth sign, it's, it's the second earth sign. The last earth sign is Capricorn. Capricorn represents all the hard work and all the achievement, you know, that all that, that hard work went towards. But Virgo is the steps that are needed in order to reach that goal, that mastery that we see with Capricorn. So we're sort of at this midpoint. But um, yeah, so this new moon, it opens up a new lunar month. This will take us into October. But again, this lunar month, it touches on eclipse energy. So you may find that this, that this, that, wow, English heart, that this week um, is touching on some major themes. Um, eclipses feel like a door opens, a door closes, we go off in a new direction, um, this is the way that I describe eclipse energy. It's like there's a room and then, or rather you're watching a play, or watching a theatrical performance and the curtain comes down, the curtain comes up on a new act. And with that, there may be new people, new set, new, you know, the plot has shifted. That's kind of what eclipses do. They shift along the plot and the narrative of our lives. So that's something to keep in mind this week. Um, you know, further, uh, in a few moments, I'll go through uh, this Virgo new moon for each of the 12 signs. Um, I think the other thing that I like about this new moon is that there's a lot of stability in it. Um, Mercury, the ruler 
of the new moon is making a trine to Saturn. We sort of need that steady hand of Saturn after all the ups and downs of the last lunar month. The other thing is that this new moon makes a trine to Uranus. And last month's new moon had a lot of uh, intense energies and a lot of squares and, and whatnot with the with with the with the new moon but this one has a trine so it says that the things that we implement the plans that we make the steps that we take going forward uh, maybe there's an opportunity because uranus is a planet that tries to get us out of our own way by any means possible but it's also a planet that can help us to see things differently to if we're so entrenched in something happening a certain way uranus is like well why not try it this way? And believe it or not, it's actually better. So we've got that energy. And I also see in this new moon that there is Mars trying Pluto. So we have Mars and Virgo and Mars and Virgo likes to get things done. It's a little bit of a workaholic if I'm being completely honest, but trying Pluto, we've got energy in this new moon. We've got energy that needs an outlet because um, if you have Mars and Pluto together in some aspect in your chart, you are very driven. You have a strong sense of competition. Um, you see Mars and Pluto in the charts of athletes uh, because you need that power and that stamina. But for the rest of us who aren't athletes, um, how do you give this energy a focus? Maybe it's time to do some spring but not spring uh, cleaning uh, maybe it's time to get organized maybe it's time to take your health your wellness seriously uh, maybe it's time to implement new systems these are all the things that you may seed and put into uh into forward motion with this new moon today, September 6th. Um, we're still, I mean, even as I record this, still one foot in those Leo, uh, those Leo energies. Uh, we don't really start that new moon um, until later, you know, a couple of hours from now as I record this. So set your intentions. Um, I think this is a good time to do all those sort of healthy intentions that we say to ourselves that we're going to do throughout the year, like especially in January. But what now that a year it is, this definitely in the second half of the year, sort of the, really the last quarter of the year, almost, uh, what do you want to set in motion? So that's the big focus of this week. I will also add that um, this we got Mercury opposite Chiron on September 8th. So Mercury is the ruler of Virgo season. Mercury is in Libra. So this, this is why this Virgo season has an air of connection and socialness and relationships. Um, there's a sense that we need to work Virgo and set in action uh, with plans, Mars and Virgo, anything that's going to recreate balance and equity and flow in our lives, Mercury and Libra, but Mercury will make an opposition to Chiron and Aries on September 8th. I sort of point this out because it may mean that there's a little bit of a poignant energy in, in our experiences this week. Chiron doesn't, it's not an energy that leads, meaning it's something that we mostly sense Chiron on a subconscious uh, level. It's sort of in the background. It's that feeling of, of this sort of emotion or a pain point or an old thing that keeps getting pressed over and over again. So I point it out in case something comes up that needs to be healed. Uh, Chiron can sometimes, that, that experience that we keep having in different forms that really talks about, talks about something that's very old in our lives. Um, and I think with Chiron and Aries, the, the key, no pun intended, because Chiron's symbol is the key. Um, the key is to really look at the things that we need to be brave and courageous about. Because with Chiron and Aries, we have to move forward with something. It could be standing up for ourselves, it could be dealing with something from the past, it could be dealing with somebody in a relationship. And but it's hard, we sort of run up against that scar tissue, or that, that smallness with uh, that we sometimes come across with Chiron. But that said, we are going later into this week, Venus will go into Libra. It's not Libra, Venus will go into Scorpio. So as we get to the end of this week, there is going to be a little bit of a shift in Virgo season. So 
Right now, Venus is in Libra. Venus is at home in Libra. So this is the past, uh, gosh, I think it's been three weeks. Um, we've been looking at relationships, been about, again, really focusing on the equity and balance and flow in our lives. Um, there's that kind of lightheartedness to Venus and Libra because Venus is in its own sign. But come uh, September 10th, Venus will go into Scorpio. So in the traditional way of looking at things, Venus is not at home in Scorpio. I actually have Venus in Scorpio. So a little bit of a uh, personal uh, reference point and it's retrograde. But I think that any planet that's not quote unquote in its own sign, but you know, it's in detriment. That's how the ancients would say. It's, it's not that Venus doesn't work. It just has to do things differently. So Venus goes into a sign that's ruled by Mars. So Venus can't do things very nice and polite as it does in Libra and now has to get real. Venus and Scorpio values. Venus is about what we value, what we love, what we, how we negotiate and interact with people. Now we're doing that on the level of Scorpio. So how we negotiate, interact, and socialize with people is through this lens of the emotional intensities of life. Realness, rawness, uh, death and rebirth, transformation, the psyche. Virgo, not Virgo, uh, Scorpio, pardon, is the sign where we meet our underworld. It's, Scorpio is a necessary sign in the zodiac because Scorpio teaches us that all things must end, all things must change. Normally, when the sun is in Scorpio, and I say this from a northern hemisphere perspective, the leaves are starting to change and to fall in the ground. It's the sense of decay in Scorpio. It's the opposite of Taurus, the other sign, you know, the sign that opposes it. Taurus is the rebirth of life after the cold of winter. Scorpio energy tells us that things are cyclical, things end, so that they can be reborn. And it's in that energy that we dive into our fears, our insecurities, and it's a time when we have to really face ourselves. So Venus is what we love, what we value, it's also relationships. So relationships and what we love and what we value now have to, we have to do the work. We have to face ourselves, face something, face something in a relationship, have a really real and honest conversation with a partner. It doesn't have to be a romantic partner, it really can be all partners. We need to get real about what we value. Maybe what we think we value is sort of how we are sort of programmed. There's a sense of society and programming and you know, the sort of the rules and structures that are just handed to us on a societal level. But when we get down to it, what do we really value? I think Venus and Scorpio really values someone or something that I can truly trust. There's a need to express that Venus energy, like go to the end of the earth for somebody. Venus and Scorpio will, it's like if that trust is betrayed, it's, it's, it's over. So I think we might start to see things come up in relationships, uh, needing to re-examine how we connect and interact and socialize. But because Mercury, the ruler of Virgo, is in Libra, doing some gym, astrological gymnastics right now, it's going to change the tone of Virgo season. And, you know, Venus will be in Libra, not Venus, Virgo, Mercury will be in Libra until um, November because of Mercury will turn retrograde at the end of September. So we're going to have this long you know, stretch until the end of Virgo season where we're doing it with a side of Scorpio. I think Virgo and Scorpio together, it's very functional. It wants to get things organized, but it also wants to really get to the heart of what's in the way. What's making a system not work? What's making our health not work? You know, Virgo is the sign of health and wellness, but Scorpio says that health is not just physical, it's also emotional. So there's this mind-body connection you get with Virgo and Scorpio energy. I also see Virgo and Scorpio energy in people who are HR, um, therapists, uh, healers, uh, even people who are in insurance and finance sometimes, um, management. Anyway, side note. Um, so Venus, again, it goes into Scorpio on September 10th. And those are the big look, the, the big things that are happening. 
this week. So I'm going to go through each of the 12 signs. Um, but just as a quick reminder, there will be timestamps when um, you watch this. Um, not right away, not for those watching the live, but you can go back and watch your sign and watch this on replay and, and also watch for your rising sign and maybe synthesize two different stories into one. You'll start to see how they overlap and maybe where they don't overlap. So that's part of part of the uh, the fun thing. Just just looking at the chat, I see some familiar faces. I know some of you are in Australia. It's the morning. I know some of you are here in the U.S. or even in Europe. So hello, it's nice to see you all. Yeah, it's kind of a, kind of a crazy time. So I hope you all are doing well. But yeah, let's look at what this uh, what this Virgo new moon means for each of the twelve signs. So Aries. Virgo is your sixth sign. Um, just a little side note, a little fun fact. Virgo, uh, Aries actually, when you, your Aries, you are what's called a natural chart. So when I talk about Virgo season, it's in a way something that's very re relatable to you because Virgo, uh, the sun is in your sixth sign right now. Virgo is the sixth sign. So this is your season to do all things Virgo. It's time to focus on your health and wellness. It's time to look at work and maybe start a new project. It's time to get things organized, to clean things out. There's such a strong drive for purity and wellness um, with Virgo energy. So this new moon is a good time to take those healthy initiatives. If something, Aries, if something is really out of balance in your life right now, don't sleep on it. Because I think that Virgo in, in advance of Libra season, it's a time to really get organized so that when you get to Libra season, everything's nice and in balance. Yes, Libra is a sign of balance, but there's a reason it's in balance because Libra teaches us that we need equity and fairness and harmony in order for our lives to flow. So do the work with this new moon, um, Aries. It's, I think it's a powerful new moon. I think it's a new moon that's really giving you some opportunities to start over, to start fresh, to make some lasting changes and to look at that mind body connection actually and even look at the attachments and the things that you're holding on to that you don't need to hold on to anymore Taurus Virgo is your fifth sign so Virgo is an earth sign Taurus you are an earth sign so this is what's called your fifth house in astrology so a new moon in this part of your astrology says it's time to reconnect, you know, go back to who you are. The fifth sign is where you express your creativity, your talent, your self-expression. It's, it's an earth sign. You know, we always think of art and it's not that this can't be art or this can't be something traditionally creative, but you need to kind of get back to what makes you, you. And this is your sort of yearly reminder that inside of you is something, it's an energy that makes you, you, and you have to express it. You have to create from it. It could be a spreadsheet. It could be a plan. It could be something else, but you have to put you into it. And maybe this is also just your periodic reminder to us that you are in a much larger, larger period of your life where everything is changing. You are changing. And as you get back to who you are, this is your season to sort of put things into motion. Maybe you are starting a creative project. Maybe you are uh, affirming and defining uh, who exactly you are. Maybe you're sort of focusing on your crafts and your skills right now, Taurus. But this new moon, um, it picks up you know, the, that energy with Uranus and Taurus. That's the reason why your life is a little bit upside down right now. Um, so you may find that this new moon gives you a push to put into action, put into forward movement, the things that have been brewing and coming up in your life. I will say, uh, you know, just to kind of quickly speak about Venus, because Venus is your, um, it's your planet. When it goes into Scorpio, it goes into your relationship sign. So the next few weeks are really about focusing on relationships. And Venus will pick up a, a lot on, uh, on that um, Uranus energy. This is, we'll talk about this next week. 
And this is just to kind of give you a little bit of a heads up that your planet Venus is changing signs and it's going in the Scorpio. So you've been spending the past few weeks focusing on your health and wellness and work, but when it's in Scorpio, it's about relationships, but it's also a lot of the changes that you've been making in your personal life are now starting to show up in your relationship life. So that said, this is a time to get back to you. This sign's also the sign of health and wellness. So this is a time for you, not health and wellness, it's time for you to get back to uh, your creativity, uh, your self-expression, uh, for you to do what makes you you during this time. Gemini. So this new moon is coming at the bottom of your charts. So the bottom of the chart is the fourth sign. The fourth sign talks about home. It talks about stability, the roots that you plant down, it talks about family. So this new moon may coincide with a move, a change in the home. Somebody moves in, somebody moves out. But it's a time when you really need to focus on um, home and all of its forms. Like where's home? who's home. But this is your season, by the way, Gemini, to, to move. It's typical of somebody who has a Gemini or strong Gemini placements in their, ch in their chart that they are they move around uh, September or the end of August. Just a little side note. But after everything that you've been through, Gemini, I think the past few years have been a little bit rough. I think it's a good time to use this new moon to reestablish your roots so that you can feel supported and grounded in your life. Something that I spoke about in the introduction is that this new moon also touches on eclipse energies. And there was a solar eclipse in Gemini on June 10th. And if your birthday was June 10th, plus or minus a couple of days, maybe this new moon in Virgo, here we are three months later, is threading back to events that happened around your birthday. Even if that you weren't born on or around June 10th, this new moon may talk about some sort of door closing, door opening, crossroads, going in a new direction, you know, type of energy, because that's what eclipses do. I know that this is not an eclipse, this new moon, but this eclipse is right in the middle of the eclipses that are in May or were in May, June, and the eclipses that will be and November of December later this year. So this could be a really powerful week for you, Gemini, or even a powerful next four weeks because we got a full moon in Pisces two weeks after this, but uh, this is a time for you to really reestablish your, your connection and reconnect to family and family in all of its forms. I realize family is not always something that um, has a happy connotation to it but you can this even includes your your chosen family and do focus on your home how does your home reflect stability and security and groundedness in your life um, this new moon uh, again picks up on a lot of powerful energies of mars and pluto and uranus so there's a this is a new moon to really make a, hopefully a positive change Gemini, Cancer, I think about it, Cancer. So this new moon falls in your third sign. So a new moon in the third sign says that over the next four weeks, this is very focused on movement, voice, communication, learning, education. This typically is a busyness whenever there's a, a new moon or a full moon in this part of your astrology. So you may be very busy for the next four weeks. Uh, you've got places to go, you've got appointments, you've got things to cross off on your to-do list. This part of the chart also talks about choices. And true to Virgo form, there's a need to get very discerning and to reflect, I think Virgo is the editor of the Zodiac, um, to really reflect on the choices that you're making right now and how that is setting you up for the next six months or the next however many uh, days and weeks and months and then the, kind of the next leg of your personal journey. That said, this new moon may focus on needing to take classes, um, taking workshops, getting new perspectives and new ideas. But this, you know, this new moon, as I said, picks up on a pretty strong energy. So I think there's a lot of support in this new moon to make some positive changes. Uh, maybe with this new moon, you have something to say. You know, Virgo is opposite Chiron, so maybe whatever you have to say is it has it's deep. 
It's got a lot of uh, deep emotions and feelings uh, connected to it. But that said, uh, this is a part of the chart that is about travel, trips, uh, road trips, going out of town, back and forth in your neighborhood or your city. So again, a lot of movement with this new moon. Leo. So it's not Leo season anymore. So here we are. The sun has moved on to what's called your second sign. So Virgo is your second sign. And when you get to the second sign, it's about taking all those new beginnings that came up during your birthday season and making them real, getting grounded, making sure your feet are on the ground. Um, the second sign is a money sign. So the next four weeks are a time to really focus on your material life, your financial life, and maybe even um, start some new initiatives with money and income. This could mean uh, making changes or positive changes in your, your income, uh, getting more uh, resources available. And this new moon also asks you, like, what do you value? What do you what do you think? What are you worth? So maybe these are themes that are also coming up for you over the next four weeks. But um, this um, this this new moon and even the, the full moon that's two weeks later that really does talk about uh, this the role of money and material and resources in your life. So I think it's a good time to get back to basics and reevaluate what you need in your life in order to feel rooted, grounded, safe, and secure. We're talking about the second sign, but it sort of reminds me of what's going on with Gemini right now. It's focusing on the home and stability. But for you, um, this is, you know, Leo, this is a time when in a way it's very similar, but it's coming from a different place. It's coming not from an emotional place. It's coming from a very, you know, uh, physicality of life. Maybe you're spending more money right now because sometimes when the, when the sun or the moon or whatever gets this part of the chart we're making we're spending money we're making investments or we're gathering we don't always have to spend money we're gathering the things that we need and including you know things that are you know bartered and swapped and, and given to us so really focus on getting back to basics right now leo especially after all the intense ups and downs during your birthday season um, Virgo, happy birthday, Virgo. So this new moon is sort of like your personal reset for the year. Um, for those who have a birthday on uh, September 6, plus or minus a couple of days, you are taking this energy with you into the coming 12 months. So typically, if your birthday is on a new moon, the coming year, it's a conventional astrology wisdom, um, is a time of new beginnings, symbolic new beginnings. So for those who aren't born on September 6 or close, um, this is still a time for you to reset, to refocus on what sort of, uh, what, what are your plans for the coming uh, 12 months? Because this is the start of your personal year, Virgo. What initiatives and what actions do you want to take? It's the start of a journey. And you've got all this support. You've got Mars trying Pluto, you've got Mercury trying Saturn, you've got Sun trying Uranus, you have Venus trying Jupiter. What sort of major goals do you want to achieve over the coming year? So there's a lot of support, but there's also a lot of support to make positive and lasting transformations. So not a light new moon, um, but one that does have a lot of groundedness in it. And it, again, it picks up on the energy of the eclipses and threads back to that, um, to that new moon that we had, that solar eclipse we had on June 10th. That solar eclipse was in your career sign of Gemini. So maybe there's something also about career right now. That lunar eclipse that was on May 26, maybe you're also something about home and moving and, and you know moving house or, ch or changing something about your living situation or the people that actually live with you, Virgo. Libra. So this new moon is in what's called your 12th sign. So Virgo season is the season that represents the end of your personal astrological calendar. If you hit the last stretch, and as you hit the last stretch, it's time to go with them, to reflect, to um, to shed, to shed the things that just um, you don't want to bring with you 
into the coming 12 months. So this is typically a very quiet time, a very spiritual time, and a time to retreat from the world. This new moon also says that healing, you know, Virgo is a sign of healing, um, isn't just physical, it's also spiritual. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is a time to look at spiritual healing as well as physical healing, to look at your spiritual health and even spiritual service, in addition to the themes that Virgo, you know, physical, or, you know, service uh, and health, physical service, physical health, uh, that Virgo season teaches us. But really think about what you don't want to bring with you. Because when you have that Libra new moon, this Libra new moon will be in um, October, that's the start of your personal year, in addition to your birthday, of course. But um, I will also add that Venus is your ruling planet. Venus is going into Scorpio. Scorpio is your second sign of the zodiac. Um, so this is a time when you're going to see a little bit of a shift. Um, you know, with Venus and Libra the past few weeks, it's been breezy for you. I think Libra in general is doing a lot of deep work. I think with that Saturn in the 5th and then Uranus in the 8th, it's, it's looking at how you self-sabotage, how you get in your way and the things of the past and the deeper emotions that you need to let go. And then, you know, Venus going into Scorpio, it sort of changes the tone. I mean, I know you've been doing this heavy work, but you've, you sort of, it's been a little bit of light. But Venus and Scorpio isn't a light influence. It's sort of very security conscious. It's very aware of what it needs, um, stability and security, trust, um, money, resources, wealth, power. Um, so that's something that's going to sort of shift in your consciousness as you go into uh, September 10th and beyond. I think Venus goes into Sagittarius in early October. Scorpio. So Virgo is your 11th sign. So the 11th sign, we're sort of reaching the end of your personal calendar. Not quite. That's Libra season for you. But this is your season and this is your new moon to actually uh, strategize, to look ahead, to to kind of plan for the future. The 11th sign of the zodiac is a very future-oriented sign. It's sort of the sign that comes after the part of the chart where it achieves, hopefully, it achieves the things that it needs to achieve in the 10th house. And the 11th house is, okay, well, what's next? So what's next, Scorpio? What's what's the plans? And I think that that Virgo energy, we always, you know, I always think that Virgo is a secret Scorpio. That's, that's another conversation for another time but i think that well, with virgo as the 11th sign it really shows that scorpio likes to strategize and plan for the future so use this new moon to think about your larger goals um, also this is a new moon to focus on friendship community your place in the world society social causes being of service to others especially your community or something greater so if you've needed more connection, more community, certainly the past 12 months have been a little funky, then use this new moon to really reach out to friendships. Um, you know, maybe it's because Saturn is in Aquarius right now. This is also a new moon where you need to get very clear about who are your friends, who are the people that are rock solid in your life. Now you've got all the support from Mars and Pluto and... Saturn, Uranus. So maybe the what's happening over the next four weeks is that you're getting very clear about who's in your, you know, your social circle, who's in your support team. Because Saturn's in Aquarius right now, and this is for everybody. And Saturn says that relationships have to be rock solid. They, they cannot be surface. They have to be, you know, this is why we're seeing a lot of friends, friendships end around this time because Saturn's in Aquarius. Um, but yeah, so Scorpio, Venus, it goes into Scorpio. You are Scorpio. So even though Venus is not traditionally at home in Scorpio, it does give you a little bit of a boost, a little bit of a zhuzh. Uh, I think Venus and Scorpio for Scorpios, it sort of, Venus kind of gives you a little bit of glamour, gives you a little bit of attraction, a little bit of magnetic energy, a little bit of sex appeal. So something a little, you know, a little boost to uh, look forward to over the next few weeks. Sagittarius. So this new moon is in what's called your 10th sign. So the 10th sign is the most public. It's the highest. It's what you reach towards. It's your goals. Your, it's your ambitions. It's 
your your role, your your the title after your name and your role in the world. So this new moon may coincide with changes in your professional life. You get a new job, you make a change. Um, God forbid something else happens where the change is made for for you. But this is over the next four weeks a time to really focus on your professional goals and ambitions, and take that step up. So you know, with Mars also in that part of your chart, you know, maybe you've already been working hard the past uh, few weeks. You know, Mars will spend in total about five six weeks in Virgo. But I think this new moon really capitalizes on Mars's influence in your career life. So this is a great time to launch initiatives in your public life, your professional life, to go after what you want. Mars is the hunter. Um, and this new moon um, will sort of cement things for the coming four weeks. So really push yourself in your professional life, should you want to, of course. Um, you do have that Mercury trine Saturn, so you do have a lot of support and stability at this time. Um, Capricorn. So Capricorn, Virgo is your ninth sign. So Virgo is an earth sign. You are also an earth sign. So this is a time when you're starting to arc into the last stretch of your personal astrology. And when the sun and the moon or new moon reach the ninth sign, it's about what do you believe in? What are your convictions? What's your faith? What do you stand for? What is your sense of right and wrong? There is a, a, a bit of morality in this part of the chart. You know that word is super loaded. Um, but this is a time to really look outward into the world and sort of examine what, what, do, you, what, do, what do you believe in? What do you, what do you stand for? Um, this part of the chart does talk about opinions. So maybe you have plenty of opinions in the next uh, four weeks. Um, that said, this new moon does touch on higher education, um, legal matters matters, foreign travel, long distance travel, but also these sort of philosophical existential questions that's that annoyingly come up. Um, so maybe you are going back to school, maybe you are planning a long distance trip Do be safe. Um, maybe you are examining your motivations and sort of the, the convictions that you stand for. Maybe you're really examining what is right and wrong in your life. I think that this is a time to really search for answers, to search for truth, lowercase t, truth, not capital T, truth. Um, but that said, it's a very outward looking time that then will start to lead you into the coming uh, four months, if I'm doing up until your birthday, if I'm doing my math right. Um, so this is a time when you're really looking outward in the world and maybe uh, look searching for answer, answers or even traveling. Aquarius. So Virgo is your eighth sign. So this new moon um, puts you what into, into what I like to call the eighth room. Over the next four weeks, you are facing yourself. You are looking at life's deeper emo emotions. It's about the psyche. It's about death and rebirth, transformation, resurrection. It's about the things that you don't normally want to look at, but this is that necessary emotional alchemy that enables you to get to the other part of your personal zodiac. And it's through that, I always say, you know, if the ninth room in astrology is about wisdom and knowledge, well, how do you get that wisdom and knowledge? You have to go through the eighth first. So this is a time when you are doing a lot of deep examination. You, you know, something powerfully emotional, emotionally is coming up. I will say, Aquarius, that this has been a little bit of a stressful year for you. You've got Saturn in your relationship sign. You have Uranus in your sign of home and family. So this is maybe bringing up a lot of vulnerabilities and insecurities. Um, when we are in the eighth room, although this is for four weeks for you, talk to somebody, you know, therapist, a counselor, a guide, a trusted friend. There's a, there's a need to talk and confide and to reveal oneself when we're in the eighth room because that's what ha helps that's what helps the emotional alchemy. It's what kind of leads you into the latter parts of your personal astrology. But this new moon, um, you know, it does 
touch on some eclipse energies, maybe some of these kind of twists and turns that are happening. And then I will also add that the eighth is also about finance and money and wealth and resources. And maybe you're dealing with your know, partner's money, setting up, uh, working with a financial advisor, setting up uh, plans for the future, insurance, um, retirement, um, taxes, all that um, money nitty gritty. So do, you know, to Virgo's credit, use this Virgo energy to get your financial life in order. Um, Pisces, last but not least, Pisces. So Virgo is your relationship sign. Uh, Virgo opposes you, like, you know, you're over here, Pisces, Virgo's over here on the other side. Opposing does not mean bad. It just means you're part of a natural polarity. So Pisces, you know, uh, to, to connect with Virgo, Virgo stabilizes Pisces's energy. Pisces is a water sign. It's very ethereal. It's the last sign of the zodiac. But Virgo teaches you that we have to be, you know, feet on the ground, rock solid. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this new moon is about your your relationships, all your relationships, not just romantic relationships. So this new moon could mean a reset in a partnership or a connection. This new moon could also mean a new relationship, a new partnership and connection if that's relevant to you. But it's a time to really look at the people that you're connecting. How are you setting boundaries? How are you socializing and interacting in a way that creates equity in your life and not inequity? Sometimes with the Virgo Pisces uh, thing, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Polarity. It can be kind of tip either way. It's like we want to help other people, but we help people so much that it's codependent or we help people so much that it's, it's unequal or it doesn't have healthy boundaries. So I think this is just a friendly reminder with your new moon and your seventh sign to re-examine, re-examine balance and partnerships and um, what are healthy boundaries for you. So that is your look kind of speedy look at the astrology uh, through the 12 signs for the week of September 6th through 12th, 2021. Um, thank you all for joining me um, for another live look at the astrology. For those that are watching on the replay, you can watch this on YouTube, uh, in IGTV, on Instagram. You can listen on Spotify. So for those that are listening on Spotify, hello. Um, yeah, you can listen to this as a as a as a podcast. But um, yeah, you you know, follow me online at empoweringastrology.com on social media, of course, sign up for my newsletter. And uh, of course, you can book a consultation with me. Many of you are my are my are my clients. Yes. Um, I, I have a I don't know if optimistic is the best way to describe my um, take on Virgo, uh, Venus and Scorpio because it's not easy. I'd say this from personal experience, um, but um, yeah, I think you can definitely work with Venus and Scorpio. So thank you very much um, for watching me for another live look at the astrology. I will see you all next week. Until then, take care. Bye.